to represent Redeemer, which serves as a strong motivation for me to use my skills as a therapist to do something I truly believe is a calling. In a small token of appreciation, I have here an olive wood Jerusalem cross, uh, which you can see here is one large cross with four smaller ones. There's a framed description about it as well. There's different meanings. Some say it represents Christ and the four corners of the earth, or Jesus and the four gospels, or also the five wounds. Downstairs, there's also a few dates remaining, which I um, left out for the 11 o'clock service, so please enjoy. Uh, so I was in Jericho with Phil uh, for one week from the 5th to the 12th of January. The rest of the 24-person team was there another week in Haifa with Holocaust survivors. Uh, we were broken down into two groups, a vision clinic and a wheelchair mobility clinic. We were in a wedding hall that was donated by a Muslim businessman, such as before, because of all the work that we do in the area. So of the 24 people, we get broken down into different tasks. Six of us are therapists, we're given an interpreter, and we have some mechanics to help. You can see pictures here of all the wheelchairs and equipment that we have to offload from giant shipping containers. They're stored at a partner organization with gain called Seeds of Hope, and uh, the equipment is stacked from floor to ceiling, and it's pretty arduous to bring in all the equipment out. But we have a day to get everything prepared. Everybody breaks into their assigned duties so we can begin the process. Uh, so on Monday morning, which would have been the 7th, I believe, or the 8th, we um, have a nurse who does an intake process to get an idea of what our clients or patients need, and she tries to assign them based on availability or the, the skills of the therapist permitted. Uh, I believe we saw about 200 patients in all. I saw about 40 myself. Uh, most of my patients were complex neurologic problems such as uh, cerebral palsy, uh, post-stroke or spinal cord injury after injuries from falling or gunshot wounds. So here's a picture again of the hall, what it looks like. And you'll see some pictures of some of the clients I work with. There's some before pictures of the equipment they came in with and then afterwards what we do. So you can see a picture here of one of the fellow's chair that he came in with just kind of taped together, held apart so it doesn't fall apart rather. Sometimes equipment comes in so dilapidated it looks like you could blow on it and it would just disintegrate. It would be appalling by our standards, but they make things work as best as possible. So this man here, he's paralyzed from the waist down, but now he's able to propel his wheelchair and sit more comfortably to reduce any kind of pressure wounds that he might have. One of the teenage boys I work with, uh, most of my clients range from probably age 13 on up, although you'll see a picture later, I did have a few uh, young children as well. That's my Muslim interpreter behind me. You can see in this picture that the one fellow with the red clown nose, he's a, a German citizen who works with a partner group called LifeGate Ministries and they come in and help us out to meet the needs of the clients we serve and at the end of the week we donate equipment to help them out as well. As you can see here with this young fella, unfortunately his cerebral palsy is so bad he has no use of his arms. And I wish there could have been more we could have done for him, but we are limited sometimes. But you can see his chair he had before and then what he looks like afterwards. Some of these clients we work with might just need something simple like a pair of crutches. Uh, others could take two, three, four hours to work with to get everything put together. This young boy has spina bifida. You can see here, here's one of the girls that needed a lot of help. She was unable to sit upright. Her father's holding her head. So we got her what I would call a specialized wheelchair. It has a tilt and space feature. And as you can see, as she starts to settle into it, it has supports on her sides as well so she doesn't fall over because she can't even sit up. She starts to relax and get comfortable. And there's all kinds of padding which you may or not be able to see. There's a seat belt. There's padding between her legs to keep her legs outward. All that reduces the spasticity and tremors and, and spasms that she has in her body. And you can see how she looks now. So as a therapist, you look at things from one of two perspectives. How do you help the client? Or how do you help the family? So most, most times, we're just helping the family help them get around and transport them. It's amazing to think how most of these people that live on the second floors have to be carried everywhere. So it's pretty astonishing. This man here, um, Fahid, he has a scarf holding him in his chair because he falls all the time. 
So you can see now after a chest harness and a specialized wheelchair and cushion how he's able to sit upright. This is Donna, she's the lead physical therapist. She's in her mid 70s I believe. She's quite an inspiration. She does four or five mission trips a year and she's always trying to get me to do more. But she's, she's a great lady. And these are the other therapists we work with for the week. Some are from Oklahoma, Missouri, and New Jersey. This gentleman, Celine, he had a stroke. He was leaning heavily to the left side. He has no use of his left side of his body. And he's able to now sit up in a chair, also train him how to use a bedside commode use a walker for transfers and a cane. So it's pretty impressive how he now can function a little more and he's obviously a lot happier. This gentleman, uh, he was injured in the war. He's paralyzed from the waist down. So he's just my size, so his son had to carry him everywhere so I got him a wheelchair, trained him on how to use a body lift and a commode as well. So his world's now changed so his son doesn't have to drag him everywhere or try to hoist him up. So it truly is a, a big life impact when you show them some of these things. That's my interpreter. This guy was great. He was a young boy. He had a learning disability and a torn right knee. But as I mentioned, the other services, the thing that's pretty unique when you travel across the ocean and go into different cultures, the one thing that connects everybody is wrestling. He knew all the characters. He knows John Cena. And he was showing me all his moves, what he could. So it was, we had a good laugh. So he was a lot of fun to work with. Here's another paraplegic. Everybody's so thankful. This young girl is my favorite story of the week. Her name was Kathor, seven years old, blind, and had cerebral palsy. As her family brought her in, they carried her, and I saw her at a distance, and I thought to myself, I hope I get her. I think I'm going to want it with her. So I did, and you can see as I'm holding her, what her body goes through and the contortion. She has what um, we call extensor tones. She thrusts herself into an elongated position like this. So her family has a really hard time feeding her and taking care of her. So I was sizing up what I needed to get her. She took about three hours to work with, and you can see the process when you get a tilt and space chair with a head control, chest harness, seat belt, a, a certain cushion, padding between her legs to keep her legs out. She also had a leg length discrepancy where her right leg was longer than her left. You can see all the changes that we had to make, and as she gets more accustomed to it, how she calms down, relaxes, and she's able to sit up and engage. She wasn't happy there. But then she gets happy again. Um, what's really touching about this story, her family gave me a picture of her. You can see her parents in the background. Afterwards, I, I, I always joke about it, I got a metal container called Nestle Quality Street Chocolate. I like any chocolate, you have no idea what they are when they're all individually wrapped up. My interpreter was telling me this colored wrapper is good, this colored wrapper is not. I think we have different tastes, obviously, from what her perspective is. But I handed them out to everyone at work there, patients, volunteers, interpreters. And here, one of the Arab Christians from Seeds of Hope came up to me and asked, who had a baby? Who got married? And I had no idea what he was talking about. And he proceeded to tell me that in that culture, chocolate and prizes like that are only given out to special family occasions. So it was very heartwarming to be considered something so special to help their daughter out. There's a few other clients left here in the, in the pictures that follow. But that pretty much sums up the week. And at the end here, that's is all that's left after all the equipment that we had. Probably not even enough to fill up a third of a container. And we unloaded almost two full containers of equipment. And then whatever's left over is donated or saved for the following year. This chair was provided from the school that he's in, but he needed a chair for home.
So again, thank you very much. You know, you're, you're asked by the volunteers, whether they're Muslim or Arab Christians, if you're coming back, and I would definitely would like to. It's hard to answer yes or no, certainly, at that moment. But I believe the Lord will provide, and we'll, we'll all know in the future what happens. Currently, I'm in the infancy stage of my work, trying to develop a service ministry, since they did provide me to go on this trip without any personal time. So hopefully, yeah, something can come of that as well. So thanks for all your support again. Appreciate it.